Number 710, as amended to the Senate, the Secretary will read the bill. In the House of Representatives, House Bill 710, as amended in the Senate by State Affairs Committee, an act relating to minors to prohibit certain materials from being promoted, given, or made available to a minor by a school or public library, to provide for a cause of action, to provide for damages, to provide for injunctive relief, to provide for affirmative defenses, to provide for a form allowing a person to request. Sarah Carlson. I ask unanimous consent that further reading of Senate bill of House Bill 710 be dispensed with and the journal show that it has been read third time at length, section by section, and placed before the Senate for final consideration. You've heard the unanimous consent request. Is there an objection? Hearing none, Senator Carlson, you're recognized to open the debate on House Bill 710 as amended in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, this bill is, I believe, a reasonable compromise for all parties regarding the obscene and harmful material use issue. The sponsors and I understand the frustrations of all those who have weighed in on this topic. The issue has created great division in our state. This legislation creates a process that is fair for both sides. One side may want kids to have access to certain material and the other side does not. By keeping material in the library and moving it to its rightful location, this helps to solve the division. Parents can allow their children access as they deem necessary. Harmful material is not in all libraries, but has been located in many. This bill does not attack libraries or librarians. The purpose of this legislation is to protect children from access to harmful material. We are trying to protect the innocence of our children. It is proven last year that the material does exist. It is still in some libraries and schools. A study has shown that 74% of likely Idaho voters want the ability to remove a minor's access to harmful material. This is our fifth attempt at solving this issue. This is a good bill. As you may recall last year, House Bill 314 passed the Senate floor and the man on the second floor vetoed it. He said there were two things he would like corrected. We have addressed his concerns in this legislation. He wants no institution to go bankrupt and no frivolous lawsuits. In 2023, we were told by the libraries and librarians that harmful or obscene material did not exist in Idaho libraries. This year in 2024, we are told relocating harmful material or obscene material will close some libraries. If the harmful material does not exist, then it should not be hard to relocate the material and it won't cause libraries to close. In this legislation, we are codifying a relocation policy. Some libraries have a policy in place, others do not. We are simply codifying a relocation policy. We have instituted a 60-day written relocation form. The relocation request form will be universal and reference our existing statute, Idaho Code 1815-14. 60 days is more than a reasonable time frame to review the material and relocate or put the material back in the library. The libraries have requested we only use the Miller test 18, 15, 14, 6 a and ask that we remove 18, 15, 14, 6 B from Idaho code because it goes beyond the Miller test. This request was accommodated in this legislation. 18, 16, 14, 6 B has not been challenged by the Supreme Court. The ACLU has threatened they will challenge this legislation. With this change, the worry of this legislation being unconstitutional goes away. House Bill 314 awarded $2,500 in damages. We have lower damages from $2,500 all the way down to $250 in this legislation. Libraries will not go broke. This legislation keeps local control. Libraries and schools create their own policy. That is local control. The one requirement in the policy is to have the relocation form referencing 
Idaho Code 181514 on the form. If we do not address this issue now, it will keep coming back as an issue we have to address. We know this material can be damaging to kids. Let's put the responsibility in the hands of the parents. There is no book banning. This codifies a relocation policy that is fair. This process is fair for both sides of the issue. Harmful materials is already in code. We are actually taking away language from the code to clear up the possibility of a legal challenge. This will not cause frivolous lawsuits. State courts have broad authority to throw out frivolous lawsuits and even punish citizens who file harassing lawsuits against the government. There is no evidence that causes of action created to protect important rights are misused to file frivolous, wasteful lawsuits. I ask for your support on this bill. And with that, Mr. President, debate is open. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Senator Just. To debate the bill. You have the floor to debate. <clears throat> Indeed, the bad bills do get better. But I, I, every library in the state already has a process in place to remove harmful material. Every library in the state has an elected board or an elected school board. <clears throat> I'm going to approach this, this a little differently. I, I might point out that there's, it's fine for parents to decide what their kids can read. It's not so great that they can decide what your kids can read. That's the argument I usually use when talking about this issue, but I want to point out instead that there are many books that I and many of my constituents don't like in libraries. I still want them to be available because that's what freedom of speech is all about. A children's book many of my constituents would object to is called Why Everyone Needs an AR-15. They're welcome to keep that from their kids, but they shouldn't try to keep it from your kids. That's my point. This isn't about keeping pornography from kids. Where is pornography? Pornography is here. It's not in the libraries. This is about keeping ideas from kids. Ideas good and bad are in our libraries, the brick and mortar embodiment of the First Amendment. We need to protect those ideas. This is not necessary. I'll be voting no. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Sarah Van Orden. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the good lady from Seven stand for a question? Sarah Carlson, please? will you yield to a question? Yes, Senator will yield. Sarah yields, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Good lady. Um, let's see. On, on page three, um, see, so um, starting probably lines 12 through 14, talks about relocating harm from material to minors to an area with adult access only. Um, I had a conversation with a number of librarians that. Um, have adult sections, but they are not inacc inaccessible, I guess. So I wondered if there was any way that there might possibly have to be a fiscal note on this bill that we could help them to be able to make those areas not accessible. Um, because I feel like this is a mandate that we're giving to them and not helping them to make those areas um, not accessible. Sarah Carlson. Mr. President, Senator from 30. 30. Three zero. Three zero. <laughs> Can't read that far, sorry. Uh, for small li libraries, it, it, this, is, this is what the local control part is. For small libraries, you could have a shelf behind the librarian's desk that that they are, you know, that it's adult only, reference only. I'm sure a lot of these art libraries already have a similar section. They may have to make some choices to move that to that area. And larger libraries, the larger libraries have talked about um, their upstairs is the adult section. 
they, they may, the larger libraries may have a bigger challenge to, to move it, but the small libraries will have the ability to just move it behind them. But it, that is the local control part. And there may be possibly a fiscal uh, component in it, which I would be happy to work that legislation next session if, elect, if reelected to allow them to have the money that they would need to relocate a reasonable amount. Mr. President. Sarah Van Orden. Thank you, Mr. President, to debate the bill. You have the floor. Um, in my area, we have a number of small libraries. Um, and for them to be able to move things around, a lot of them are in older buildings that have a second level on them. Um, as I visited with them, they felt like for them to be able to move books around, if they were having to put um, even not just these, if they had to cordon off a, a level, I mean, a place on the main level, and even to move other books up into a different section, they would have to make that handicap, handicapped accessible because they are public libraries. And so I feel like there is a fiscal impact of this um, bill that I would like to see addressed um, this year. I mean, it's possible to do it next year too. But at this point, I feel like they would kind of be put in a bind. So um, my debate is against the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Senator Taves. To debate the bill. You have the floor, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Fellow senators, I just want to talk really quickly about what this is about and what this isn't about. Based on the definition that we're talking about, this is material that's harmful to minors. It's the same material that would be harmful to minors if you were in a, a store and you looked at a magazine rack and you could tell which ones they had probably uh, a cover over the top because it couldn't be shown to minors in that store. They couldn't buy that material from the store. This is that material. Here's what it's not, and this is from the bill. Nothing in herein, and this is page two, line seven, nothing herein contained is intended to include or prescribe any matter which, when considered as a whole and in context in which it is used, possesses serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for minors. That's mostly what we have in libraries. Fits that description. The small number of books that I've seen, and it is a small number that would fit the definition of harmful to minors, could easily be put behind a desk and kept out of the reach of children. I and mean, we're talking about maybe 10 books, maybe 20 books. We're not talking about hundreds of books. So I would contend that there is no fiscal impact that it would be easy to keep this out of the reach of minors in an adult only area, which could just be behind the, the desk. The parent, if there's parents that want their children to have access to that, all they have to do is look behind the desk and ask for that, but it wouldn't be accessible to minors. Uh, it feels sometimes like we're acting like the material in question. It's like we're talking about material that doesn't fit the definition that is in this bill. So I just wanted to point that out, that this material is the same material that people would be criminally charged for if they were not a librarian or a teacher. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there further debate? President. Debate Sir. the bill. Sir Trickle, you have the floor. Mr. President, may I read from a book checked out of the library called Let's Talk About It? Uh, you got to be way more specific than that, Senator. It's, uh, it's a library book titled Let's Talk About It. Let's but, Talk About It? Yes, that's the name of the book. And uh, by your judgment, it's appropriate, correct? It's appropriate for children, so yes. All right, go ahead. Knowing that... This comes from a book that's checked out in the library that is appropriate for children, that children are allowed to check out, that a 12-year-old child checked out. And don't forget, everybody's got a butt. After the train has left the station, so to speak, and you've had a chance to wash up and douche back there, 
you can have an ass load of fun with a healthy heaping of lube. Apply broad pressure to the outside of the entrance. Circle your butthole with your finger, pausing any time. Uh, Senator, I think we get the point. I can't read it on the floor, but it's good for kids. <clears throat> Seriously, those are the kind of the books we're talking about here. That's the kind of smut that is in the libraries. Look it up right now on the catalog. Boise Library, Nampa Library, let's talk about it. That's the name of the book. That's what people are defending for children to read. A 12-year-old child checked out that book. 12 years old. I'm done. Mr. President, to debate in favor of the bill. Senator Foreman, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to point out quite clearly that this bill does not ban any books. Nothing is being banned from our libraries. So that ends the freedom of speech First Amendment issue right there in my mind. Nothing's going away. Nothing's being banned. Freedom of speech is still there. It's still intact. Now, I've heard from many different sources that this material is not to be found anywhere in our libraries. Wrong. I went out and looked in the libraries myself. <clears throat> I found it. It's there. Now, I've also heard that, you know, one person's pornography is another person's art. All right, granted, that's a fair argument. However, when you simply apply common sense and good judgment to that interpretation, it becomes crystal clear as to the difference between art and pornography. Like one Supreme Court justice said, I can't give you a definition of pornography, but I sure know it when I see it. Well, I know it when I see it, and I've seen it in our public school libraries. Not all of them, but some. So again, common sense and good judgment needs to be applied. It's pretty doggone simple, and we can do it. And this bill does do it, so I urge your full support for the passage of this good bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Senator Nichols. Thank you, Mr. President, to debate the bill. Go ahead, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. So this is, I think we're on number five, maybe a little bit more, over the last couple of years of debating this issue. And I think this is a great compromise for a good solution for Idaho. This bill protects minors. It gives parental involvement. It gives clear guidelines. Uh, it gives an affirmative defense, a review process, local control, and overall this bill aims to balance the importance of freedom of expression with the need to protect minors. And that is the heart of this, is to protect minors. I would say that if your library is going to have to have a large section to be able to put these materials in, because like we have talked about, is it every library? No. Is it a ton of material? Does not sound like it. It sounds like it's a little bit here and there. So if your library is needing more than just maybe a bookshelf or a little space like that, then I think there's a bigger problem for your library than what this bill can actually um, take care of. But the, the bottom line is that we are wanting to protect minors. We have guidelines and rules and laws to protect minors in all sorts of ways, shapes, and forms, and this is nothing different. So this bill is a good bill to be able to do exactly what we're needing it to do. It's gone through quite a vigorous process over the last few bills that we've been um, discussing, and so I will be supporting this bill because I think it gives us exactly what we're needing. There for the debate. Mr. President. Senator Taylor, you're recognized to debate the bill. Thank you. Um, I will agree this is the fifth compromise, but it's a compromise for a problem that I don't believe exists. I think it is something personally that has been um, exaggerated quite a bit. Recently, a constituent of mine reached out to me, and I'm going to paraphrase a story she told me about driving around with her son in her car shortly after an election and attached to that car was a flag and that flag said F Biden. 
Now, I think we all understand what the other letters were in that first word. And it's a very, very terrible word. But it's a word that was displayed in public for anyone to see, especially young readers who are compelled to read everything they see. How do you explain that to them? Where do we draw a line as to what people are allowed to read? We go to these libraries. We mentioned that it's 10 or 20 books. I have a list here of approximately 200 books that have been mentioned. I know that there are libraries in my district that don't have very large budgets. And $250 can make or break that library. My friend took that opportunity with her son to be a parent. She didn't take it as an opportunity to censor what was going on. She took it as a parent and explained that that person in that truck had the right to do that. We talk about local control. We talk about parental control. We talk about the parents knowing what is best for their children. I believe that as parents, we need to be in our children's lives. Go to the library with them. See what it is they're checking out. Be a part of their life. And if you're that worried about a library book, take their cell phone away. Take their Xbox away. Take all of their computer stuff away. There is much more damage being done there than there is in a library. I don't believe we're fixing a problem. I think we're creating a problem. And I would like your no vote on this. Thank you. Is there further debate? Mr. President, debate the bill. You have the floor. <clears throat> on March 20th, the gentleman on the second floor signed House Bill 498. That passed unanimously on both sides, and that was the age verification bill that would require content distributors of material harmful to minors. No matter how it's distributed in Idaho, they would have to do age verification for minors before they can get that content. And in that bill, there was a very clear definition of what was harmful to minors that both sides of the rotunda and the gentleman on the second floor unanimously agreed, and I've heard debate here today, that we want to keep that material out of the hands of children. And it is 100% sexual material that appeals to the prurient interests of children. So in other words, it's outside of the normal realm as judged by the average person in Idaho or in a community. So we were 100% in agreement with House Bill 498. House Bill 710 uses the criminal definition of material harmful to minors, the same standard, 100% sexual, appeals to the prurient interest as judged by the average person, in the community, and House Bill 710 is an age verification bill. Okay. That's all it is. Yeah, right. It's saying that before the same material that House Bill 498 addressed online gets distributed to a minor, we want to verify the age of the person accessing it and not make it, and the purpose for the age verification is to not make that material available to minors. Bologna. So we all agreed in the one bill, and now this bill is doing the same thing for libraries. That seems completely connected and completely reasonable and no different than the standard we applied in the other bill that has been signed into law. That's all House Bill 710 does. And so if there isn't a problem at the libraries, then they will not need to do it anything. It's only the hypersexual material that we said we don't want via House Bill 498 available online, that we're saying we don't want available to, in libraries to children, and we want our libraries to age verify. This is the bill that's before us today. 
House Bill 498 had a private cause of action that was very expensive. House Bill 710 has a private cause of action that is not very expensive. I urge your support for House Bill 710. Is there further debate? Mr. President, to debate the bill. Senator Zeiderfeld, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, First of all, this isn't censorship. We're not saying to remove them from the libraries. We're telling them to put them in a safe place away from the children. And if the parent wants to rent them out for their child, they have to go through the proper um, ways of doing that. And so it's not... It's not removing the books. It's just saying to put them in a safe place. Here's another interesting thing to me. If we have that much material that we have to like renovate buildings or spend a lot of money to get that material out of the reach of children, then we have bigger problems. Like the senator from District 10 said, we, to me, I'm thinking a file cabinet. If we are filling a file cabinet, I'm thinking that's still too much material that is in our libraries. And again, we're not removing it. We're just saying that we are putting it in there to, away from children to protect them. And another issue that I am struggling with is how we are constantly defending libraries and books, but we're never defending the children. That should be of the utmost importance to us. We want to protect them in every other way, but we are not wanting to protect them from this material. And just like the the senator from District 11 was reading, it's, it's available. I mean, we cannot deny it. Is it in every library? No, it's not. My smaller libraries in my district, um, they actually went through, when this started happening last uh, session, they went through their libraries and they took it serious to look to see what kind of material they had. So they did it on their own. But there is libraries that are not doing that. And so I think that just having these guidelines and making it where we're protecting our children is the utmost importance um, to what we're we're dealing with here. And so I am going to urge your yes vote. And again, think about it. If we had that much material that we have to renovate buildings or spend a lot of, uh, of tax dollars, then we have a bigger problem if we have that much material. And I'll be voting yes. Mr. President. Early. Thank you, Mr. President. So we all have our opinions about what this bill is, and we've, we can express that on the floor. But I will take issue with... Um, not supporting this bill, meaning that you don't protect children. And I'm ending my legislative career, and I'd like to put my record for standing up for Idaho's children at the center. My concern with this bill is not that I don't want to protect children from pornography. An easy way to make sure that our libraries are only accessible for the information that we want is to make them adults only. We could put XXX on all of our libraries and say it's just adults only and you can't come in here without your parents. Let's do that. Parents come in and then they can monitor everything. We'd like for our libraries to be open and so I can appreciate and, and honor the intentions of this bill. I absolutely...